What's up guys, it's Justin again with another video. Uh, today we're going to cover uh, another basing tutorial. This one's going to be a little bit more simple than the last one I did. So if you remember my last video, um, I did a uh, Into the Dark style basing. Uh, that was more uh, Into the Dark themed after the basing set that GW was releasing where there was um, elements that raised off the bases. Um, now this, I think, is going to be more closer to their advertising style. Uh, a lot of the Into the Dark bases were uh, very low profile. Uh, I suspect they took little sheets of plastic like this, they glued them to the tops of the bases, they cut them out, and then they basically configured them in a way that there was little gaps that represented panels. So that's one way you can do this. Uh, this is a old school, it had the dimple in the middle, uh, 25 mil base. Uh, all I did was cut two pieces of plastic, glue them next to each other, uh, cut the, uh, the edges out. But uh, you can do this with a knife. So if you just have a simple hobby knife and a straight edge, you can cut these. I'm going to use something a little bit more uh, advanced than that uh, for my Gundam days. So we're gonna go ahead and zoom in here. I'm using a uh, Madworks 0.3 millimeter chisel. And uh, I actually just took the uh, 90 degree or straight edge off my chopper too. We're going to lay this on top of here and we're just going to go ahead and cut uh, just a straight line into this. Now you don't have to put any pressure down with this chisel or your knife. Just make a couple passes. Uh, it doesn't have to be you know one cut and done. Make a few passes that way if you if your hand slips or if anything moves um, any impression you make is going to be incredibly light. And once you get about I don't know, five or six, seven passes, you should have a decent line. Decent enough that you won't need the guide anymore. So once we get that, I'm just going to go ahead and trace a couple more. And then I'm going to spin the base the other way. And we're going to drag it the opposite direction just to make sure that, um, you know, the line's pretty even. So I'm good with that. Now if you wanted to, you can measure out and do a secondary line uh, to kind of create the impression that there's a couple of panels bisecting so uh, same deal as before just do like half of that line there we go and then um, we're just going to trace that out a little bit now once you've got your lines piloted down uh, I'm going to grab some sandpaper this is 220 grit, the, the grit doesn't really matter. You just want something to smooth out the surface a little bit. Uh, now I pre-sanded all the tops of these bases to get rid of most of the texture. I still wanted a little bit there because, uh, you know, it, it, at the scale that we're working, it does kind of look like maybe uh, like a concrete floor or something like that. So, and there's what we're left with, something like that. So, this is a couple panels. I've done all of these up. We're going to go ahead and prime them. Uh, I'm going to prime them in black. But uh, before we do that, I do think if you're going to add any basing elements, now is the best time to do it. So give me one second. Now, in all the advertising for Into the Dark uh, teams or uh, anything like that, all the basing has been incredibly minimal. So uh, we've got this flat base. I'm just going to put a couple drops of super glue on here. Maybe. There we go. Just real tiny drops. They don't have to be anything substantial. Um, and if you can avoid lines like I've done there, that's probably a good idea. Uh, I'm going to take some, I've got this big old tub of uh, medium, like, I guess, ballast. And I'm just going to sprinkle that over those drops of super glue. So it looks like there's little rocks and debris just kind of hanging out on the base. You really don't need much. A lot is going to go a very long way. Or a little is going to go a very long way. Um, and then if you wanted to add any other elements, if you wanted to add skulls or uh, model pieces, now's the time to do it. Alright, so we're going to take some Corvus Black. We're going to go over the top with a nice big fat brush and we're just going to kind of uh, stipple this all over. Try and avoid uh, any lines that you drew and just kind of work that 
across that surface. Make it nice and, um, I guess, mottled looking. And if you get it on your stones and stuff, that's okay too. So, something like that. All right, so once your stippling has dried, um, we're gonna take spaceship exterior uh, or whatever light gray you wanna use and we're gonna do uh, a little bit of our on base decoration just to get started. Uh, so I'm gonna do two different styles of this. So on you know, simpler bases or if you don't wanna go as crazy, uh, all you really need to do is just block in just a little white stripes Um, then your paint down, obviously. Uh, it doesn't have to be done in one go, but we're gonna just paint in a nice stripe. And this could simulate like, um, you know, marked off areas that people can walk through or zones or anything like that. Just, uh, you know, and if you want to do like both sides, if you want to do like make an angle somewhere on here so that it looks like there's like a lane maybe. I mean, this is a spaceship. There's designated areas for things. Uh, you know, nothing has to be perfectly straight, perfectly thin, perfectly one way or the other. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this same color. And I'm going to block out a much larger area. Now, let's do like that. And then we're just going to fill that in. And uh, you don't have to make this perfectly white. Um, in fact, I think if you let it be patchy, it will serve you better. But do try to keep, uh, like, brush strokes to a minimum, I guess. So, something like that, I guess. Now, I did have a little slip, and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about real quick just how to fix that kind of stuff. So, um, on this one... There was a small area. I'm just going to take that Corvus Black and I'm just going to go up against that and just kind of push it back a little bit and just square things off. That'll work. So for this, um, if you paid any attention to any of the War uh, Hammer community articles or anything like that, uh, a lot of these bases had not a ton of detail on them, but they had a little bit. Uh, and one of the things they had was a lot of them had hazard stripes. So what we're going to do is we're just going to paint in a couple hazard stripes. We're going to use that Corvus Black, and we're just going to very carefully just put that in there. Now, when I'm painting hazard stripes, my favorite thing to do is just line the piece up so all I have to do is paint straight down. The spacing is important here, um, but it's not so important that it needs to be absolutely perfect. Uh, as long as you're not insanely far off. you should be able to get away with things being a little bit different. But what's more important than that is that everything is going in the same direction.
So something like that. Now you can kind of play with this. You can shorten things up. You can uh, tidy up your lines. You can make sure that everything is the opacity you want it. But once you get things where you need them, uh, I'm actually going to reinstitute a little bit of this uh, starship color here. We're just going to kind of push this line back just a little bit more. Kind of like that. Um, once you get this where you want it, um, we're going to start working in our next color. Uh, but before I do that, I am going to push my black lines just a little bit further just to kind of create the impression that, you know, they were painted on um, and they were part of this whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and do these bases real quick, get these where I want them, and then we'll come back. All right, so just to give you an idea how things are looking, uh, this is kind of where we're at. Got a bunch of different bases, a bunch of different designs. Mix it up a little bit. Uh, change up the size of your stripes. Uh, change up the way you do the stripes. Just kind of mess around, you know. Uh, I've got one here that doesn't have anything on it. Uh, I would recommend not doing all the bases the same way or, like, you know, mix it up. So we're going to go back to our original one. I'm going to take uh, my Corvus Black on the palette. We're going to take some Ash Gray. We're just going to mix that in. That was probably more than I wanted to do, but that's okay. Because we're going to thin the crap out of this. It, it just needs to be real thin. And we're basically going to do the exact same thing we did with that first round of Corvus Black. We're just going to water it down a whole bunch. And uh, we're going to gently, carefully stipple that on to some of our open areas. So uh, grab that and just kind of, you know moving around try not to like reload your brush a ton because um, you want to like move the pigment around so maybe like dip your brush in a little extra water and just start pushing that pigment that's already down while it's still wet work quickly again avoid those edges um, and this is going to kind of start creating that more concrete texture and look um, because we're pushing that gray into the dark gray it's it's not an even coat now we don't want to really get it on our white if we can help it and we want to try to avoid those edges again if we can help it but it's not a big deal if we get it one way or the other we can always go back and push things around and uh, make micro adjustments later but we do want this to be really thin low opacity um, you can even hit the rocks and stuff if you want, but that's kind of what we're going for. Something like that real gross, uh, uneven looking, a little more than dirty paint, water, gray. All right. And once again, here's kind of where we're sitting. Uh, everything has, uh, like a little bit of a, a light gray sheen to it. It's very modeled. It looks very, it looks a lot better than I thought it was going to look when I was, uh, planning it out. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on these details. So I'm going to take an old, really janky brush. I'm going to dip it in that ash gray. I'm going to dry brush using not a flat brush, but one of these small round brushes. And we're just going to dry brush the rubble. Um, and the reason we're using this kind of brush is it gives us a little bit more control. And it's easier to just kind of poke around and do what you want with. So just like that. All right, so here's about where we're looking. Uh, nice standing, uh, the rocks and stuff are standing out now. Uh, I'm going to take, I'm using Army Painter's Skeleton Bone, but whatever bone color you like, go ahead and just paint all your skeleton or uh, skulls or whatever else you've decorated the base with, however you would decorate those. Uh, get everything painted up the rest of the way. And then we're ready for some final touches. All right, so for the last part of this video, before we uh, jump into finishing touches, we have one more thing I want to add. So I'm going to actually go ahead and take my palette paper out. This is uh, the same palette paper I used when I was painting the Arbides. Uh, if you couldn't figure it out already, that's what uh, is going on these bases. Uh, we're going to use the wet palette uh, with nothing on it to our advantage here. Uh, I've gone ahead and taken some of the decals off of the uh, sheet. We're just going to lay them in the palette here, 
just let the backs get soaked. Um, we're going to stick some of these decals on our bases to kind of indicate maybe like areas where, uh, you know, they would travel or whatever, um, you know, just to break things up a little bit. I think the, the one I'm most excited about is this big guy here. Uh, I'm really hoping that this goes on the way I hope it does. But we will go ahead and... Uh, now normally I would use some tweezers, but all my stuff is downstairs. So we're just going to grab it like that. Give that a little slide. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Look at that. Um, yeah, just like that. And then you grab a cotton bud if you have one readily available. And you just roll out that excess moisture. Alright, so we have a couple finishing touches to do once we get all these decals where we want them. Uh, so I'll be back in just a minute. Alright, so there's really only one last step uh, outside painting your base rims if you need to do that. Uh, and that's kind of tying all of this into like the weathered theme. So like, obviously these little white details aren't quite the same. Uh, but we, we want to kind of create the impression that things are weathered. So I'm going to use uh, Sarah from Sepia. I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade. I've got known oil around here somewhere. If I can figure out where I put it, we're going to use that too. Uh, basically, we're going to use those three paints in conjunction. We're going to uh, basically, we're going to take a little bit. We're going to start with the sepia just because it's the lightest of the three. And we're just going to kind of like tap a few spots around. I'm going to clean my brush off and I'm just going to move that paint around just so that it, first of all, it's going to stain the areas around but it's also going to uh, discolor any of the details and stuff. So it's, it's going to create the impression that these things are in fact aged and filthy. Um, and then that's just the sepia tone. You might not be able to tell super well, um, but once we get some Agrax on there, I think that'll change a little bit because that's a, it's a little stronger. So again, we're just going to dab some of this around here like that. Uh, you don't have to grab every single section, but, you know, try not to, like, intentionally leave places open because it, it, you can tell. There we go. Grab your open spaces, too, because you're going to kind of influence these colors a little bit. Um, but that's something what we're looking for. Uh, it's not as clean. It blends in a little bit better, I think. And if you're not happy with it, just go ahead and add a little more. Um, now, another thing you can do is you can also wash down like the rocks and any elements that you've put on the base. Just kind of wash around them. It'll kind of help them uh, stand out just a little bit better. But yeah, I think that's pretty good. I can live with that. So we're going to go ahead and carry that on with the rest of the bases, and I'll show you what it looks like when we're all done.